Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Carrie and this is Mark. Hey. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Carrie and this is Mark. Hey. <laughs> Today we have a special treat. Yep. Um, Mark will be showing you a photo tip of how to take vibrant photos in the nighttime. At nighttime. And why is she saying it? Because she goes through every single image I do at the studio and sees every single image. Through the years, uh, I have photographed how many things at nighttime? I mean, oh, cars. What? Uh, cityscape, skyline, skylines, uh, fairs, the Christmas uh, at the Arboretum, Christmas at the Arboretum, um, just a ton of things at night. And today we're going to give the secret of how to photograph at nighttime. So enjoy, Mark. It's a special treat. Yeah. So here we go. So today's video, I am going to be telling you the secret of how to photograph vivid lights at nighttime. The secret of photographing at night is don't photograph at night. Yeah, don't photograph at night. And so as usual, it doesn't really matter what camera you have. I don't care if you have an iPhone or if you have an expensive camera like I make a living with every single day. It really doesn't matter because what it basically boils down to is skill. And well, all skill is is knowing how to do something and then applying. So I want you to watch this video to the end also because at the end of this video I am going to be giving two more bonus tips. Super easy to do and you're going to see exactly what they are. The secret about photographing lights is you want to photograph those lights before the sun comes up and after the sun goes down. Right when most people think that that's not the right time, that is the correct time. After the sun goes down before it gets too dark, that's what us photographers call magic light. I don't want you to be one of those photographers that every time a drop of rain happens you pack up your camera and or if when as soon as the light goes away outside you put your camera in the bag. You're missing a lot of opportunity by doing that. So keep those cameras out and look for that opportunity when others pack theirs away. Our eyes during the day, our rods and cones in our eyes as we look around, everything's in technicolor. It's really wonderful outside. But as the sun goes down, all of a sudden our rods and cones, they get screwed up. Kramer, comment. Our rods and cones start making things look dim and kind of monochromatic. And so what's wonderful about the camera is it doesn't have the limitations that our eye has. That's why when you see a camera capturing vivid, colorful photographs at nighttime, you're really drawn to those because we can't really see them any other way. Here's what we're going to do. I am going to photograph our trailer, Davy 2, and I'm going to photograph it in 10 minute intervals uh, before the sun goes down, when the sun goes down, and keep going until it's at night. And then what I'm going to do is together, you and I, we're going to critique my images and I'm going to show you the secret of photographing at night, which is what? Not photographing at night. Yes. So come along, learn this skill, and away we go. All right. So here we go. Let's look at the critique here. Welcome to my uh, humble studio. And on the first image here, you're going to see, well, I really can't see. Uh, this is our trailer. And this photograph was taking uh, about, uh, about, I would say, at dusk. That means the sun has not gone down yet. So, what you see here is this sky is empty. If you can get some clouds in your sky, it, it, it's much, much better. But if you can't get any clouds in your sky, you're going to see in a minute that it's really, really still wonderful. So even at before the sun goes down, right as the sun was going down, hasn't dipped below the horizon line yet, that even that the um, lights are still predominant. And you can even, I left the light on inside with the door open so you can kind of see the characteristic of this light and even the step light here. So even with this 
lit with the ambient light around it before the sun went down, you could still see a lot of the lights, just proving that even when the sun, uh, the light gets low, you can still have the lights shown, which is a lesson in itself. And if you hear that bell, that's my dog Oscar who wants out. So then uh, I told him that uh, before I said I was going to go every 10 minutes, except that every 10 minutes, that's not long enough. <laughs> so I had to go like every 20 minutes in order for there really to be a big difference. So 20 minutes later, after the sun went down, I get this image. And still, it, the sun's dipped below the horizon line. And it's, the sky is still pretty blank here, or very blank. Uh, but now you can see the difference here. You see how these lights are much more predominant, and this light inside is much more predominant. Uh, let me flip back to the other one. So this is the first one before the sun went down. This is the one after the sun went down. Some great things are starting to happen here. You can start seeing this ambient light right here. Uh, actually, yeah, ambient light in here from the porch light, lighting this up much better. You can see here. See how here it's, this is there, and then here this is starting to happen so there's some really good things starting to happen right as the sun's gone down but the real magic light light we talked about is going to happen on the next image uh, so I waited another 20 minutes and when you wait 20 minutes I'm gonna tell you that it looks very dark outside I mean it's gonna be look like it's dark and it's actually not dark because of the explanation I said about our rods and cones being screwed up at night time so anyway since the camera doesn't have those kind of limitations, when the sun goes down and it dips below the horizon line, you're going to get this. Yeah, that is beautiful. Look how the sky has gone blue. Wonderful. And see how the trailer is lit with this warm light and this, even the lighting here. It's one, and you can even see back here in this window where it was lit and then inside the door. So you, you go from, let's look one more time, you go from dusk, the sun has not gone down, and then you go where the sun is just dipped below the horizon, and then 20 minutes or so later when it looks pretty dark outside, you keep your camera out like I was saying, don't put your camera up, and you get this wonderful things going on here so you have this really really blue sky and then you have this warm trailer so a little bonus for you here is anytime a color is cool like this is a cool color blue it recedes away from you so it's going to recede away so anytime you have a warm color like this it's going to proceed to you so warm proceeds cool recedes and when you have this push pull factor here of this pulling away and this pushing forward this is what you get and on top of that you also have a cool color here which is green so the green is actually pushing away also so you really have this wonderful you you know cool color warm color cool color so this is what you get when the sun goes down that's why you keep your camera out. You need to put this on a tripod, and you also need to put this uh, on a slower shutter speed as it's going, as the sun's going down. And then, if you're using an iPhone, like I said, it really doesn't matter if you're using the iPhone. Uh, you can go on there and get like a time lapse app, like a slower app for nighttime photography on your phone, which I've used, and it'll give you this exact result here. So let's look at it one more time. So I went from whoa where am I right there so I went from oops not that okay so I went from this which is going to be before the Sun goes down this after the Sun goes down and then this when the Sun has gone completely down and you're getting what's called the magic light which is great now I went ahead and photographed another one 20 minutes later then it's gonna look like this you can still see the blue sky in here, and it's still a really, really good shot. You can still see everything in here, and then the green grass, all of it. And this is literally, I mean, it's, it looks like it's dark outside our eyes because it plays a trick on your eyes. But this is what you get when you don't put your camera up. So you're looking at this 
when the sun is completely down 20 minutes after sunset. This is probably at least 40 minutes after sunset, and there's still a ton of light in the sky. And then I wanted to show you one more that this is when it's completely dark outside. This is when uh, a lot of people, and if you do this, great, you know, I mean, you can do this. You can get a lot of ambient light, and a lot of people photograph in total darkness. But in my experience, what I have found is this is what you get, which is still okay. I mean, it's a bit garish, so you have like these lights and this, and so it's, it's garish. But if you photograph during the magic time like this, or especially this, this is where the skill happens. The skill happens like when you know when to photograph. And this definitely is the time to photograph. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Man, the difference between the nighttime shot where everything disappears at the top here. You know, it just goes away. Everything's way too dark. You lose everything. Compare that when most people pull their camera out as darkness to this when you know that about 20 minutes after that sun goes down when it looks too dark to photograph outside this is what you're gonna get and it's interesting I think that the sky uh, this is another skill thing so you know that your sky after the sun goes down is gonna go from this blank sky even though you don't have a cloud in the sky and this is the after the sun's gone down uh, past the horizon line this is the skill I knew that all I had to do was wait and my sky was going to go completely blue like this. And then, you know, to the naked eye here, this didn't look like this at all. This was super dark outside. All I could see really was the trailer and that's because our eyes are just can't see. We see muted tones at night time. So this is what you don't see. Wonderful, wonderful image. So compare that image to total dark image. I mean, there's way of so much difference in that. So that's the lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed that lesson. And oh, right. I was going to give you two added skills for watching it to the very end. And here goes one of the skills. And again, it's very simple, but you have to apply it for it to work. And the two skills that you're seeing here in play is of course knowing when to photograph at night but this bush yes anytime you can lay something in front of the other thing like this you get foreground midground background anytime you can do this photography uh, videography do this so you put something in front of the trailer. I call this an intelligent shot because I really don't need the whole trailer to tell me I don't mind this being blocked because I used it on purpose in that manner. I know it's a trailer. I don't need to see the whole trailer. So I always try to put something in my foreground so I can have a natural vignette onto this side. So then I would have my foreground, my midground, and my background and uh, one other skill that you're going to want to apply to is this angle of view angle of view uh, actually it's not angle of view uh, this actually is camera height so your camera height you got to be very very careful with that I've shot so many cars and so many things and what you want to do is you want to get a very low camera height. See how I brought this camera way, way down. My lens probably is probably right there. That's about as high as my lens is here. And so what happens when you do this and you get really low on things is that it tends to loom. You want it to loom in the image. And pretty much anything that you show that's full length like this, be it a person, be it a, a trailer, a car, that kind of thing, get really low on it. And you can loom it. And then what happens is when you start getting this kind of skill is you throw three of them together, which means that I got low on my full length subject. I put a vignette here so I could have my mid-ground, foreground, background, and 
I had the skill of knowing when to photograph. So when you start putting all those skills together, you start getting these really, really awesome photographs and your skill level really, really grows. And truly, that's what about that's what it's all about. So that's your skill, guys. I uh, hope you enjoy that. I'm really, really excited about sharing it with y'all. And I'd love for y'all to put some comments in, below for me. And uh, I really appreciate you watching. Hope you learned a lot. Okay, so now you know the secret of photographing at night, which is what, Oscar? Correct. Not photographing at night. Photograph before sunrise or after sunset. Very good. Okay, well listen, there's going to be more tips coming, so keep checking out the videos. And I always appreciate you watching. I'm Mark with The Art of RVing. Carrie's probably already asleep. So... From the both of us, we appreciate you. Keep tuning in to videos and subscribe. We'll see you later. Thanks for, channel. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Carrie and this is Mark. Hey. <laughs>